Now that we've defined a good base frame with Rotorbrush, Rotorbrush is going to use that information to try to predict what the mat should look like at frames earlier and later in time. It actually uses a form of motion estimation to determine if an object's moving and to try to follow the edges as they move from frame to frame. Your job is helping make sure that Rotorbrush stays on the right track as it propagates that information forward and backwards in time. The best way to work with Rotorbrush is to start with your current frame and then jump ahead or behind a few frames at a time. Rotorbrush will calculate the intermediate frames and show you this is where it thinks the segmentation boundary should be now. This is pretty good, got a little bit of dust here in the corner and I'll come address that a little bit later on. If you're finding that when you jump a few frames earlier or later from your base frame, the Rotorbrush is making big mistakes, you can go to the propagation settings for Rotorbrush and start to tweak those to basically teach Rotorbrush a better way of following motion. You can start off by saying, well, where is Rotorbrush searching for motion? I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the search region. And this yellow area basically says, based on the motion in the frame, this is where I'm searching to see where the edge is moved to. You can go ahead and reduce this search region, which will make Rotorbrush faster, or if there's fast motion, you might need to increase it so that Rotorbrush looks further for edge movements. Motion threshold and motion damping say, hey, how much does an edge need to move before Rotorbrush should start thinking about moving that matte edge? If you've got noisy footage with film grain and the such, you may get a phenomenon known as edge chatter, where a supposedly stationary edge will seem to vibrate or tear apart because that noise, that film grain, is giving you false sense of movement. Threshold and damping allow you to help control what's going on. Rotorbrush has a couple different ways of looking for edge movement. You can either say, well, where do you think it should have moved to? Bias your prediction based on that. Or look at where the most recent adjacent frame's edge was. Bias your prediction towards that. Balance tends to work best in most situations. But again, if you've got a problematic frame, you can try these different settings and see which is giving you better results. Similarly, if you're really having trouble tracking something, particularly with a lot of motion blur, this use alternate color method option just changes the algorithm slightly inside Rotorbrush and gives slightly different results. Again, if you're having trouble, try the alternate method to see if it gives you a better result, otherwise you can ignore it. Anyway, that's the technically correct approach to using Rotorbrush. You can just use the brute force approach of return to your base frame, move forward or backward one frame at a time, and then correct any mistakes Rotorbrush may have made. Now, if you have an extended keyboard, you can use page up and page down to move forward and backwards. While Rotorbrush is active, you can also use the numbers one and two above the normal alphanumeric portion of the keyboard to move forward and later. I'll press one to move backward one frame at a time. I'll press two to move forward a frame at a time. So I'm gonna step backwards through the shot and see where Rotorbrush makes mistakes. Press one again, check my edge carefully, and I'm seeing it starting to miss a little bit of this jacket here. So at this frame, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in slightly, pan over to it, and just say, hey, Rotorbrush, include that in your search as well. Maybe a little bit of this very blurry edge here. Once you've made correction strokes like this, Rotorbrush will take that correction and propagate that correction in the direction these span arrows are pointing. So if they're pointing back away earlier in time from the base frame, any changes you make here will be propagated this direction. If I was to make changes here on the other side, where the arrows are pointing forward from my base frame, any changes I make will be propagated forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep moving back through this and teach Rotorbrush any mistakes that it's making so it can better pick these things up on subsequent frames. And I might wanna look across the whole frame, not just that one area, because it does change. Like, see this little area of noise here in the corner? That's Rotorbrush picking up a piece of lint that it shouldn't. So I'll hold down the Option or Alt key and say, just ignore that little piece. Make sure I didn't miss that. Oh yeah, I did miss in that frame. Here we go. And you can just go ahead and say, don't pick that up. There, there, there. Now, you see, it's missing that lint in subsequent frames. It has learned that little piece of information that I taught it. I'll go ahead and get rid of that bump there. Any other problems around here? 
depends whether or not I really want to keep this fuzz on the back of his neck. As it comes into the frame, let's go ahead and try to capture that. And a little bit around his ear there. And you'll see it's doing a reasonably good job automatically catching that in subsequent frames. Now it's picked it up more as it comes into the frame. Good job. And I'll keep following Rotor Brush earlier in time, fixing these edges along the jacket, etc. Now it may seem that this is being a little bit tedious, having to make these little corrections every single frame, but trust me, making these rough strokes is a lot less time consuming than if I was actually having to correct a mask outline or draw new paint strokes from scratch every single frame. Now during this propagation period, you really do want to go through every one of these frames and make a correction on every frame you can to improve your matte outline. I'm not going to make you sit through me doing all that work now. I'm going to go ahead and correct these frames. We'll jump a little bit ahead in time and I'll show you how to deal with some other issues in Rotor Brush's propagation as well.